When you first read Achan Lee's Instructions for Breath Meditation, there are a lot of sections that for a Westerner may seem very strange. He talks about the breath going down the spine through the different parts of the body, the arms, the hands, the legs, the feet. And if you think of breath as air, it sounds impossible. And it is. You can't push air through these things. But when you think of breath as energy, and that's what he wants you to think, you realize you're simply letting the energy flow. And it's actually already there. Now, you may not realize this. It's like going hunting for mushrooms the first time. There are certain kinds of mushrooms where if you look at a pile of leaves and the expert mushroom hunter says, look, there are lots and lots of this mushroom in that pile of leaves. You don't see anything. You just see leaves. And all of a sudden, there's a little switch in your perception. You recognize one of these little dark brown spots as not a leaf or space between leaves, but an actual mushroom. And then all of a sudden, there are mushrooms everywhere. They were there all along. It's just that your categories of perception were telling you something else. They're like those magic eye pictures. You look at them one way, and it's just a welter of little dots and shredded pieces of color. And then there's a shift in perception. You realize there's a three-dimensional pattern in there. Well, it's the same with the breath. You're sitting here with the breath all the time. But unless you learn how to perceive it that way, you're not going to sense that it's breath. There's an energy in how you feel. You simply feel the body. The fact that you're sitting here, you know where the body is. Part of that's because of the breath. And we're meditating on the breath. We want to get sensitive to that. Because holding this different kind of perception in mind helps get the mind into the breath, snug with the breath, surrounded by a sense of breath. It feels really comfortable. And when you have that sense of comfort, it's a lot easier to settle down and enjoy being settled down. So try to hold that perception of mind. What you sense of as your breath, <coughs> excuse me, what you sense as your back say. That part of the mind say, that's breath. You're feeling breath energy there. And how does it feel? Does it feel constricted or does it feel open? If you're not sure, try breathing in different ways. You've got the in and out breath. And then there's the breath that flows through the blood vessels and through the nerves and connects with all the muscles in other parts of the body. That has a gentle flow to it. And like the currents in the ocean, there are many levels of flow going on. There's instantaneous flow. As soon as you start breathing in, there's an energy that's already gone all the way through the, the nerves. It's because of that energy that you actually breathe in. And then there's the flow of energy that follows on the activity of breathing in like a second layer of massage. That's a little bit slower. These things are all happening. And if you allow your old perceptions of what's going on in the body to get a little loose, you begin to see that in between the spaces of those loosened up perceptions, there is a possibility breath can flow. And so your in-breath is not being pushed against, say, the tissues of the body so much. Your in-breath is learning how to meld with the breath energy that's already there. The one that's more subtle, or, or even a deeper level, there's one that's absolutely still. But it's the subtle moving breath that you want to pay most attention to, because that's what's going to allow you to relax, open up around different sensations in the body. If there's any sense of tension or tightness in the body, think of the area around it as being open. And that tension can dissipate out into the open energy field. When you think of the body as an energy field this way, it's a lot easier to settle down into it, and the breath energy comes in, and it's not fighting the body. When you breathe out, it's not like you're trying to squeeze all the breath out. You just let some of it out. A good part of it just stays right there all the time. It's just that the different energies mingle. And so you want to allow them, once you get a sense of what this is all about, then you allow them to mingle in a way that feels harmonious and energizing. 
And you find it really is a good way to get into the present moment, to feel at home. And that sense of feeling at home allows you to relax around the breath. Because all too often the mind is like a cat that jumps from one uncertain, unstable place to another uncertain, unstable place. So it's always tensed up. As soon as it lands on one thing, it's tensing up to go to the next and the next. It never has a chance to fully relax. You want your mind to be more like a cat lying on the floor. You've seen those cats that sometimes they, they lie so spread out they don't even look like they have bones. Remember that cat in Peanuts? It was just flopped over the girl's arm. So you want to have that sense of allowing the mind to fully relax into the body in the same sort of liquid way. So what you're doing here is giving the mind something good to return to here in the present moment, because as, especially as you're beginning to meditate, you'll find that it has other things going on as well. You've told yourself you're going to sit here and meditate, but who is it inside you who told who inside? You find there's actually a com whole committee here in the mind. And some of the committee members want to meditate right now, and other committee members have other ideas. You know, think about yesterday, think about tomorrow, think about whatever. And so your best way of dealing with them is to give something really, the mind something really interesting to focus on, something to explore here in the present moment where it feels good and you get an immediate sense of reward for focusing in a particular way just staying right here, and having this good place to come back to. That's one of the prime ways of training the mind, to stay with something you wanted to stay with. You learn how to relax around it. When there's a sense of ease, it may not be too much to begin with, but when you notice, okay, this part of the body feels easier or feels more light, feels more pleasant than that part of the body. One way of noticing this is just going down and comparing the different sides of the body. How does your left shoulder feel when you compare it to your right? How about your left hip and your right hip, or your left knee and your right knee? Go down the body, your left foot, the right foot, which one feels more relaxed? And how about the one that's less relaxed? Can you think it to relax? So it's just as relaxed as the one on the other side. One of the immediate advantage of this, advantages of this is you know, a greater sense of ease. But it also goes deeper in this. It's good for the body to have all the parts of the body being nourished by the blood and the breath energy. And it's good for the mind to have a place where it can settle down and put aside all of its burdens, relax around the present moment. Now, there will be some cases where the mind refuses to even stay with a breath for two or three breaths. That's when you have to ask yourself, okay, what else is going on? If there's something that's insistently pulling you away, you may want to spend a little time thinking about the disadvantages of wasting your meditation time thinking about that thing. Part of the mind may say, this is really important. You've got this problem you've got to face tomorrow, so here's a whole hour. Why don't we think about it now? And the best argument against that is that, okay, at the end of the meditation we can think about it. And if you allow the mind to rest and settle in with one object and gain a sense of strength and a sense of nourishment, a sense of well-being, it'll be able to think through that issue a lot more clearly and to see the issue a lot more clearly once it's rested. So if there's something really important, Put it aside. Say, okay, we'll come back to that later when the mind is better prepared. Now, other things that are not all that important is something that, simply things that you like to think about when you have a little empty space in your mind, a little empty time. Lust may come up, fear may come up, jealousy may come up, the desire to relive old wrongs may come up. And you have to remind yourself, there's nothing gained by these things. These are old movies. And even though you may tweak the plot a little bit or tweak this a little bit, it's still the same old stuff over and over again. And you've been through these things many times. And it may give you a little bit of pleasure, but right now we're working on something that's going to give you a lot more pleasure. It takes more work, 
may be unfamiliar, but it's going to pay off in the long run. And you realize if you think about thoughts of anger, thinks about jealousy, lust, where is that going to take you? If the, the mind keeps coming back to these things, it's going to start wanting to go off and do these things, act on these things. And do you really want to do that? Haven't you had enough? So that's one way of dealing with insistent thoughts. Another is just simply to ignore them. They're going to be there and they're going to chatter away, but think of them as obstreperous members of the committee, the, kind of the troublemakers. But if you ignore them, that's all they can do is just chatter away. They're not going to do anything else. They may come at you in, with fearful faces and look a lot fiercer than they really are, a lot more powerful than they really are. But you realize, okay, they're just voices chattering away in the mind. There's no need to pay them any attention. The breath is still here. You can still focus on the breath. Years back, I was giving a meditation class at a college, and they assigned us this room that had this enormously loud clock, tick-tock, tick-tock. So for most of the people during the meditation session, they weren't with their breaths at all. They were with the clock, upset about the loud clock. And I had to point out to them, okay, this. Even though the clock may be ticking, the breath is still there. The clock, the sound of the clock hasn't destroyed the breath. You have to learn how to ferret out what you want to pay attention to and consciously ignore anything else. And you find that a lot of these thoughts, if you don't pay them any attention, you just begin to lose interest. It's like stray cats and stray dogs that come to you for a little food. If you pay them any attention, okay, you fed them, and they're going to come back again. But if you know they're there, but you ignore them, they'll stop coming quite so frequently. So that's another way of dealing with the distractions. The fourth way is once you've gotten used to seeing the body as breath and noticing how the different ways you breathe are connected to the ways you think. You may begin to notice that when a thought is about to appear, it's going to start as a little stirring in your breath energy, like a little knot appearing. And if you can sense it soon enough, all you have to do is just breathe through the knot, relax the knot. And you find out that it's not all that intricate a knot at all. It's not one of the ones you have to sort of pull the little strands out. It's just the energy has gotten wound up around itself, so you just kind of breathe through it and it unwinds. It unsnarls itself. And then you just keep watch. It's like a video game where you have a little laser that just zaps the enemy as soon as it begins to appear out of the shadows. An image I used, used to like to think of is like being a spider on a web. The spider is in one spot in the web. But but because everything in the web is connected, the slightest little disturbance anywhere in the web notifies the spider. Okay, there's an insect that's hit the web, so it runs over, finds the insect, kills it, and then goes back. So you have your center, you have your spot here in the body where you normally stay, but you want to be alert and aware and sensitive to the whole body. So the slightest little stirring or snarling up of the breath energy anywhere in the body. You're alert to it, you go right to it, zap it, and you come back. The fifth way of dealing with disturbing thoughts or distracting thoughts is if none of these other methods work. Just focus down on one spot. The Buddha says, stick your tongue against your, the palate of your mouth and just crush your mind with the mind, he says. Now, what does it mean to crush your mind with the mind? means that you focus down on one spot and you stay there and just blare out every other thing, every other thought that might come up. You might use a meditation word and just repeat it really, really fast, or say, I'm just going to focus on this one spot and I'm not going to move. It's kind of like clamping down, and it's of, other, of the various methods, it's the least comfortable and the one that you can't hold for very long involves the least amount of discernment, but sometimes it's what works. You just clamp down. And then when things finally settle down a bit, okay, then you can come out and 
return to the breath. So there's a wide range of ways you can deal with distractions. But the best one is the first. Make the breath really interesting. Try to figure out what is it about the way you perceive the breath that's preventing you from feeling really comfortable and absorbed in the breath. Learn how to flip through different perceptions. Develop some magic eyes in your mind. So that what you've been looking at all along suddenly reveals itself as having something else that you didn't see there before. It's something you can use to your advantage. Because the way we perceive things is really based on the use we get out of them. As anyone develops a skill, you find that you perceive the things that you're working on in lots of different ways because you're learning more skills in how to deal with them. So the way you perceive the breath is an important part of gaining skill over the breath and using that skill to train the mind in lots of skillful qualities that go even deeper and have a more profound effect. This is where it begins, though. And it begins here. And it's not just a step that you're going to step over and move on. It's the foundation of everything else.